Good evening. I'm back here after several days, maybe a couple weeks, since I last did a live. I'm out, out here in the yard. Just I'm hot. I just walked around Lake Alma. Uh, the Bible. I had a walking buddy named Wendell Lusk, and we walked around the lake. And uh, so, even though it's cool out this second day of August, I'm still a little warm from walking. Um, what attracts us? You see this old license plate, and I got a magnet, and. Boom, it just, I put it way off, and what attracts us to Jesus Christ? You know, it's just, uh, it's his word. Uh, within us, we have a empty space. We're made in the image of God, mankind is, and the Bible says we must be born again. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but shall have everlasting life. And that's that's in the Word of God, the, the Bible. And I, I encourage you all, if if you, I'm encouraging you people in the rest home, if you can't, in the background, I, I've got, I'm outside, and over here on the hillside, you can see the old Walston Church camp. And uh, a lot of those cabins are being rebuilt for the summer, and people are living there and uh, there's some good memories over there when I was a child in the beginning John 1 says was the word and the word was with God the same was in the beginning with God and all things were made by him and it goes on to say that John said I am not the light I come to bear witness of the light and he is the true light and that is Jesus Christ and uh, I believe in order to have revival we got to pray effectively for lost souls and uh, everyone wants the country changed and I, I do too I want the country changed but it's only going to be changed if we do like Jonathan Edwards and Charles Finney and we go on back and we see the great revivals in the 50s and the 60s that went on for six weeks and uh, they were praying for lost souls. And once you get a soul into the kingdom, there's another one to be added. You know, God is adding to the church in Jesus, after Jesus ascended, God handed, handed, added to the church in the disciples' day, and he's still adding to the church today rapidly, magnificently. And I'm not talking about a church building. I'm talking about the true church. We had the prayer of communion. That's where we fellowship with God. We, we thank him. We, we praise him. We thank him for our, our food and, and our, our clothes and uh, that we might have joy and that joy might be full and uh, uh, the joy is unspeakable and the half has never yet been told. And, Nehemiah, I'm in the book of Nehemiah, I'm in the book of Genesis, or Exodus, I was in the book of John, and, and I've been studying, I, I want to simplify this, that we're a child of God, and I'm just a novice on this, uh, child of God and you ought to know if you're a child of God it, you will sense his presence he will walk with you just like I walked with Wendell uh, uh, around Lake Alma about an hour ago uh, God walks with us daily and we are his and it says in 1 Corinthians 6 19 20 what know you not that your bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost that's his Holy Spirit 
which is within you. You're not your own, for you've been bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which belongs to who? It says it belongs to God. And I've got any notes here or anything. I'm just winging this. I, I've studied it, but you know, there is revelation knowledge. Once you read the word, you read one passage, it means something to you more than it did the day before. And uh, so, and that's called revelation knowledge. And uh, I like all the helps that we are given by mankind, but this is the only book. It's called the Word of God. It's a living book. Behold, I come in the volume of the book that is written of me to do thy will, O Lord God. And that's in the, uh, that's in the book of Hebrews, and that's in the book of, I believe, the Psalms, uh, maybe the 40th Psalms. Uh, the Psalms is the 19th book of the Old Testament. Hebrews, the language uh, uh, of the psalmist, is the 19th book of the New Testament. And it, it was in the 1900s that knowledge has been increased. We're in the last days. In the 1900s here, uh, Israel become a nation. And uh, we we're given a lot of helps. And, and I love this old, uh, it, it tells you why certain hymns were written. And uh, I, I, I'm a hymnal guy. I, I, I like the old songs. They have a message. Very much so. And I want to get back to, to the Word, but let me play a song here, and I'll get beside myself. Um, just goes by quickly and uh, here's a stool that I, I sat on it's called it's uh, <laughs> yeah. he was a gospel man that's how he got his start and, and I actually believe he made it to heaven uh, I had not seen or ear heard neither have entered into the heart of man the things that God had prepared for them that love him and it, it's so wonderful to be able to I wanted to get back on this and, and the topic is yes, no. And that's the topic if I was to title this, yes, no. In uh, Exodus 22, the 30th verse, we see where there was the Urim and the Thummim. And, and then you, you go to uh, on up to the book of Numbers, uh, chapter 27, verse 21, I believe it was. Don't correct me. I just look around there. It's close. 27th chapter, 21st verse. And, and we'll see the judgment of the Urim again. And that was in the days that Moses needed a successor, and he talked to the Lord, and, and they brought out the, the Urim and the Thummim, which was upon the breastplate of the high priest. Then we go to Nehemiah, the uh, seventh chapter, and I think we're in the 65th verse. If uh, and, and just look around there, I might be a little bit off, but I think it's Nehemiah 7, verse uh, chapter 7, verse 65. And it talks about the exiles coming back out of bondage out of Babylon, and they brought for the last time their Urim and the Thummim was brought back. Now, th this was an apparatus that said yes or said no. And it had the judgment of the Urim b back in the days of uh, Moses and back in the days of Moses' brother-in-law Aaron. And then in Nehemiah's day, it's called the judgment of the Urim and the Thummim. 
And the word Urim, uh, you people in the rest home, means light. And, uh, and then the word Thummim means integer, or we get the word integrity. And we need to walk in the light of the Word of God, and we need to walk in the integrity of what the Word of God says. I call it a spiritual IRA. Uh, integrity, responsibility, and accountability. And, and without walking that way, I don't think we're going to make it. But uh, this revival I've been talking to you, I, I believe it's coming, and it's coming for the church. And not all churches want revival. So therefore, you know, it, it's for everyone, but not everyone wants it. Same way salvation. Salvation is for all. God is not slack that any should suffer or perish, but all come to everlasting life. But with salvation, not everyone wants salvation. So you could say in a way that, you know, the revival's not for everyone. It's only for the people that says yes, not for the people that says no. So many churches are just tied up. There's my dog in the background barking. But people are so tied up with the programs and uh, we need to get away from that and get back to, to interceding. And that's where revival comes when you intercede for the brethren because Jesus Christ is at the right hand of the Father and he, he ever liveth to intercede. And he intercedes for not only for us, the believers, but for them that he knows everything, God does. For them that shall be heirs of salvation, Hebrews, the first chapter, I believe it's the 14th verse. Just, just take my word for it, that's where it's at. tells me of a place my father has built or he's gone and he's preparing it for you and me, the believer that says yes. Now Aaron had that, he, uh, Moses told, was told by God how, how to make the myrtle, how, how, how to make the ephod, how to make the breastplate and, and where to put the urim and the thumb on that and that was on over the heart of the great high priest Aaron. And the job of the high priest was to intercede. Now we had the three different types of prayer, which is communion, where we fellowship with God, then we have petition, where we ask the Lord for this. Lord, I need this, I need that. And then you go back to communion a lot of times and we thank the Lord, we praise the Lord that our answers to the prayers have been answered because we ask according to his will. But then these are all inward. But, but the best prayer is outward. It's interceding for others. And, uh, that you know, the great work is to intercede for others, to keep others. Soul salvation. You shall know that you are saved. Uh, we lost uh, Brenda Sykes, uh, I see on the Facebook, where dear saint of God, she had passed on, and she's gone on to her reward. And it, I believe it's a no-so salvation. Yes or no. And so Aaron, he had, he had the, the judgment of the Urim and the Thummim on his breastplate. And in the New Testament, Ephesians, this is a forerunner of the garments that were to put on. We're to put on that breastplate of righteousness, just like Aaron the high priest did, or El Lysiar did, another high priest in Moses' and Nehemiah's day. But, and it's also a forerunner of the, Ura means light, and like I said, and the word thumbing means integrity. And that's how we're to walk. So many people saying, well, today the church ain't walking the way they did years ago. Well, we need to get back to getting our relationship right with the Lord. You know, maybe some people are backslid and we need to intercede and, and draw them back, draw them back. and. Uh, Give them opportunity to, to say yes or to say no. Life is so short, people. Uh.
sweet hour of prayer, by the way. And then in, in Numbers, 27th chapter, the, you know, the 21st verse, it talks about the successor for Moses. He's getting ready to die, and Joshua took his place. And the high priest had the judgment of the Urim up on his breastplate. And that was the show light. And, and, uh, and, and Moses told the people, and I believe that it lit up for yes, the, the Urim, the, the light. It's considered light, Urim is. And then, then we, and these great high priests that, that had this Urim and Thummim, they showed the light and they walked in an integrity. And then we see in Nehemiah where the exiles went back and they were classified according to their tribes or the classifications of a priest or not priest or Levites or a tribe of Benjamin and so, and they were counted before they went in to rebuild that city. And, and it only took a few, few days, but the enemy was all around trying to cause confusion. You think it's bad today, you should have seen it in Nehemiah's day. But he, he had the king, he, he tasted the food for the king and he and the king saw that Nehemiah's countenance was down and he said what's wrong he said Jerusalem's needs to be rebuilt needs to be restored and needs to be rehabited by its people and so 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 the king liked Nehemiah so much and he said hey just go I'll, I'll give you all the supplies you need I hear that the gates are on fire right now and I'll give you timber and all kinds of tools for that. And you go rebuild the walls, rebuild the gates, and take your people back in. But they brought the Urim and the Thummim. Remember, the light, yes. The, the integrity of the word. Are they walking, yes or no, in the word of God? And I found out that some of the priests were polluted. They weren't walking the way they should, so they were denied according to the Word of God. And uh, that's, and you people in the rest of them, I know Bobby knows what I'm talking about. He, he ta every time I see Bobby at, uh, over at Jenkins, he, he, he grabs me and he, he said, I was reading this. And I, I said, what did it say, Bobby? And um, he, he was just like a professor. I mean, he just he used to ride the bicycles around town, had a basket on the front. He couldn't walk very well and he had a little bit of polio or something in his legs, but he picked up pop bottles that went around and he got two or three, maybe four cents for a pop bottle. And, he, and that's how he, he collected his spending money. But he's a dear saint of God right now. And Kenny and, and, and uh, Pierre that, down to uh, Oakwood or down there to Heartland. And I just encourage you all down to Four Winds or Edgewood, I just encourage you all to keep on that firing line. And just like I said, the, Paul said the Old Testament's a schoolmaster for us and we need to learn from it. And so that Urim and the Thummim was a type of not only the Lord Jesus Christ, but, but it was a type of us making our decision to say yes or to say no. I've seen so many people today that were once on fire for the Lord, and then they've, they've turned back. And, and we need to intercede once we see a person like this. The, the, you know, we see all through Facebook, I, I'm seeing, if my people which are called by my name. We're talking not only about Israel, but we're talking about the church. And they believe that once that comes around, the nation will line up. Yes, no. We, the people praying, needs to be them people 
that are walking in the light and in integrity of God's word. And if we do that, then we're going to follow 2 Chronicles 7, 14. If my people, which are called by thy name, shall humble themselves and pray, turn from their wicked ways and seek my face, then I will heal their land and forgive their sins. But we, the people in, in Christ, needs to be seated in that, if my people be in right standing with the Lord. What a friend we have in Jesus. told me the other day he built a new porch on it. He's all excited. It is so peaceful over there, he said. And it's peaceful here. The Bible says that great peace have they whose mind is stayed upon the Lord. Great peace have they which is doing the will of the Father is interceding for lost souls. Great peace have they whose, like I said, let the peace of God, Colossians 3, 16 more or less says in the amplified it says to be the umpire of your heart either yes or no the umpire says you're either in or you're out you can't be you can't have it both ways and uh, you don't put new wine in old bottles old wine skins or the reverse and you put new wine in new wine skins and that's why the Bible says, once you come to the Lord, your new creation, old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. All things are become new. And uh, it's getting a little dark out here, and I, I knew it would. I tried to get things set up, and it, it took me a half an hour to get things set up. And uh, I just love this little mechanism here, this magnet. If, if I'm out working, I'll put it close to the ground. If, if there's a nail, it, I'll pick that nail up and I don't have to worry about running it into my tires. And uh, you know what? What attracts us to the Word of God? And it's, it's the Holy Spirit and it's the prayers of the saints, the ones that are alive now that are praying for you and for me that we get in. I, I believe that catching away is really close. You know, we're, uh, you know, the, the Jews have, have been taught that once Israel becomes a nation, that sometime after that, that was in 1948, that there's going to come seven years of tribulation upon their nation. And then the Lord comes back. Well, we, the church, believe that there'll be a catching away uh, a lot of the contemporary churches call it the rapture of the church and but the bible paul said it's a catching away it's the same thing and we're caught up to heaven for seven years to be at the lord and that's where the judgment seat of the lord is with us and we receive the rewards given to us that we did for him in our body down here and we we can't we can't go back so, so many people like to chisel away at, at the uh, Word of God and they open the Word of God and, and they say, well, that doesn't apply to me and they cut it out, they rip it. And, but the whole Word of God is revelation knowledge. It, it, they just know one literal interpretation of the Word. Because every time you read, you know, Joshua said that this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. For then thy ways shall be acknowledged, and thou shalt have good success. Whatever you put your hand to, and it's in the will of God that, that, that you do the Father's will. And that's interceding 
for the lost souls. The angels are sent to and throw to them that shall be heirs of salvation. Hebrews 1, 14. I'm sort of redundant on that. But uh, I just, how did I start this? child of the king today you don't want to go back you know you do you, you want to keep on persevering the Lord said behold I make all things new now I've gone a little bit over the lights are going lights are coming on the, the urim <laughs> and the thummim yes no and that was the answers that that the urim and the thummim gave now I can get really deep into it. I, I told my buddy Wendell Lusk, I was walking with him. I, I said, I can't go any further. It, it means something different to me every time I look at it. I got to present this. And tonight is the night. This is chapter 8 of 2020. In other words, this is August, the eighth month. And I'm excited to see. We live in exciting times. We live in wonderful times. Because the Lord, you know, we're not going to be caught unawares like a, th you know, a thief can come in unawares. But we're, we know the season of his appearing is at hand. So we're not going to be, the, the church is not going to be caught unawares. They're going to be prayed up, stayed up. And uh, what is that? Give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning. <laughs> ten virgins five were foolish five were wise five had their lamps full keep yourselves full of the holy ghost pray in you know encourage yourself in the lord don't get down in the dumps david was discouraged when his men were against him king saul was chasing him he was in that cave at adulon but the bible says that his men wanted to kill him and he went in and David encouraged himself in the Lord. When you haven't got anyone else to call, it's good you have, or you got Facebook friends, or, but it's good to encourage yourself in the Lord. And uh, I believe that's it. I encourage yourself to keep on the firing line. I'll take my glasses off and see what I gotta hit. It says here to hit the finish button. So that's what I'm going to do. I went a little bit over, but I'm sorry about that. No, I'm not. I'm, I just gave you, and I may touch on this Urim and the Thummim a little bit more. Exodus 28, verse 30. Numbers 27, chapter, verse 21. And then you go to Nehemiah 7, verse 65. And then the eighth chapter of, if you want to read something exciting, you'll learn about the wooden pulpit that, that the man of God is to preach from. And that's a forerunner of what people preach from in the church house today. Amen and amen. May the Lord keep you and may the Lord bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>